Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Raildrick Geo channel. Today, we're going to be watching a new video by The Second School. Now, I haven't seen this channel, but this video was recommended to me in my Discord. So I figured, hey, why not? Let's take, take a look at it. And the video title is, Why Are Indian Weapons Deployed in This Tiny Country? So, um, which tiny country are we talking about? Azerbaijan, Armenia? Uh, Azerbaijan is next to the um, Caspian Sea, I believe, um, up there above, it's above Iran, I think? I, I, I don't quite remember, like my geography brain isn't quite up to snuff. Stuff? Stuff? It's, it's not quite up to par right now, I gotta get a refresher course on uh, country locations. But, nonetheless, why are Indian weapons here? Hmm, interesting. Let's go ahead and find out. On September 19th, 2023, really explosions recent. rocked the Republic of Artsakh. The, the Republic of what? 2023, explosions rocked the Republic of Artsakh. The Republic of what? Hold on. What do you? I, I, I couldn't understand him. Hold on. 2023 explosions rocked the Republic of Artsakh. Uh, uh, the Republic of ARA. I, I have no idea what he said. I couldn't understand him. Anyways. Bajan launched military action in the Nagorno Karabakh region on Tuesday, a move that could foreshadow a new war. Artsakh, also known uh, as Nagorno. Ah, uh, okay. Artsakh, Nagorno. Karabakh was Karabakh. a breakaway state and functioned as a de facto part of Armenia, witnessed a large-scale military offensive by Azerbaijan. Days later, Artsakh government announced that formally ending more than 30 years of separatist rule for the ethnically Armenian enclave inside Azerbaijan. Hmm. This, this whole region, man, closest like, ally. The, uh, it is, it is, there's so much conflict. The Middle East is, is strife. Rife? Rife with conflict. I think rife is the, the, the correct term. And security guarantor Russia right up next did to Russia not intervene well, wow. during this one-day war in which Azerbaijan seized the long-disputed region of Karabakh. This meant Armenia no longer saw Russia as an ally, let alone a security guarantor. This prompted Armenia to turn to other major powers, and one of them happens to be India. Despite okay, having special so... relations... They partnered with India. Now India put weapons there in Armenia, in this tiny, the tiny country of Armenia. Is that what's going on? And yeah, I was going to say, India and Russia are like buddy buddies, man. They've been buddy buddies since forever. What, 60 years now? ...with Russia, India is encroaching in what has been Russia's exclusive zone of influence. So why is India risking its relationship with Russia by arming an anti-Russian Armenia? Yeah, why? Weird. The South hmm. Caucasus, a region of diverse ethnic groups including Georgians, Armenians. I, I, I just want to point out Georgia. I've done a few geoguessor rounds in Georgia before. I, I couldn't find my way around it, but absolutely beautiful country. Armenian Christians and Muslims of Azerbaijan has long been a hotspot for disputes due to its historical ties with Armenian, that's, Georgian, Persian, <laughs> that's and Turkish That's why it empires. is, okay. These disputes have territorial claims dating back 2,500 years. However, to understand the context of current geopolitical puzzle, we must go back at least 100 years. At the end of World War I, Armenians were facing the aftermath of Armenian genocide by Turks from 1915 to 1918. It is estimated that over a million Armenians on the eve of the World War I, there were 2 million Armenians in the declining Ottoman Empire. By 1922, there were fewer than 400,000. The others, some 1.5 million, were killed in what historians considered a genocide. Man. And there's another ethnic group in Turkey right now that um, the, the Turkish government is pushing out. I, 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 for the life of me, I keep forgetting what it is. I'm sure someone will say it in the comments, but man, it's not good. It's not good. Armenians were massacred and over 1.5 million were deported, leaving them confined deported. to the Deported? Hold on, hold on, hold on. He said deported. Wh hold on. What did he say? 1915 to 1918. It is estimated that over a million Armenians were massacred and over 1.5 million were deported. He said, he said 
over a million were massacred and 1.5 million were deported. But right here it says 1.5 million were killed. Okay. Um, he's, he, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so he's just, not, okay. That maybe he's got a different, uh, source, but he, the image he put up is, is different for what he's saying. Leaving them confined to the modern day Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh. After the collapse of Russian empire in 1917, both Armenia and Azerbaijan claimed the Karabakh region leading to a small war in 1920, but it was intervened by Soviet Russia's 11th Red Army, integrating the area into Soviet Union by 1921. Hmm. They established Nagorno-Karabakh, an area with a 94% Armenian population, as an autonomous region within the Azerbaijan Soviet Socialist Republic. The conflict was thus shelved for the next 70 years, but flared up again when the Soviet Union collapsed. In 1991, while Azerbaijan and Armenia became independent, Nagorno-Karabakh, backed by Armenia, established the Republic of Artsakh, leading to the first war of Nagorno-Karabakh with Azerbaijan. By the war's end, Armenians controlled about 9% of Azerbaijani territory outside the enclave. In 2020, Azerbaijan reclaimed lost territories and some parts of Artsakh in the Second Nagorno-Karabakh War. A subsequent large-scale offensive in 2023 brought the entire disputed area under Azerbaijani control. See, this this went completely under my radar. I didn't know about this at all. Man, I really need to get get up on my geopolitical game, huh? Well, I mean, I think going forward, I think I will. I've, I've been uh, a little bit more... Uh, a little bit, I've, I've been doing a lot more research ever since I started this channel, so we'll see what's up. Forcing tens of thousands of Armenians to seek refuge in Armenia. Armenia, a member of Collective Security Treaty Organization, a NATO-like military alliance with Russia and five others, held de facto control over Artsakh. While CSTO protocol obligates member nations to assist if a member is attacked, it doesn't apply to extraterritorial disputes like Nagorno-Karabakh, which wasn't officially part of Armenia. But Russia is a close ally and a security guarantor of Armenia, and yet Moscow failed to support them during the conflicts in 2020 and 2023. As a result, Armenia no longer views Russia as a trusted ally, wow. let alone a security guarantor, and is actively seeking new alliances for its defense collaboration. So they After went its to crushing India, defeat huh? in the Second Karabakh War, Armenia began procuring arms from India, including four Swathi weapon locating radars. After this, New Delhi agreed to supply Yerevan with anti-tank missiles, Pinaka multi-barrel rocket launchers, and other munitions worth $250 million. India's interests in the region are multifaceted, including its goal to counter Turkey for its support to Pakistan's fictitious claims on Jammu and Kashmir, which is an Indian territory. I did not know that Turkey supports Pakistan on the uh, the Jammu uh, Kashmir area. That's that's wild. I, I, I didn't know that. Hmm. This backing by Turkey stems from its imperial ambition to create a pan-Turkic empire comprising all Turkic-speaking nations. I don't think that's possible anymore. A worldview that continues to direct Ankara's foreign policy. This was evident in 2020 when Azerbaijan, allegedly guided by Turkey, attacked Artsakh region. This direct involvement, including supply of weapons and troops, marked the peak of pan-Turkism policy aggressively pursued by Turkish President Erdogan. And it was further intensified in his speech on Azerbaijan's Victory Day celebrations. Azerbaijan's toprakları's destruction Siyasi ve askeri alanda sürdürülen mücadele bundan sonra çok daha farklı cephelerde devam edecektir. Thus, he unequivocally confirmed Turkey's readiness to secure its geostrategic interests by all kinds of means, including force. Both Turkey and Azerbaijan are pushing ahead for the proposed Zangazur corridor, linking them through Armenia's disputed Zangazur region, heightens Armenia's concerns. Armenia is a non-Turkic nation and is perceived as a barrier in the way of a pan-Turkic empire, which raises fears of a joint Turkic offensive so the whole to annex the Zangazur region in the future. 
Before we continue to next part of the video, please hit like and make sure hit like make sure to subscribe everybody i do that for every channel that i react to um if you want to go to this video directly i would put a link to this video in the description so feel free to go and take a look at that and then go take a look at the second school um we'll take a look at the some of their other videos at the end of this video well, after we take a look at the comments as well so to subscribe to support our channel for more such videos it appears that India was reportedly shipping arms to Armenia through Iran and then cross over to Armenia at the Norduz border point. This is interesting because Tehran and Moscow are in an alliance of sort against the West, and yet Iran agreed to help India supply weapons in Russia's region of influence. Yeah, However, that's, that's this changed when Iran blocked these shipments in April 2024, possibly due to pressure from Russia, which until 2020 was supplying 94% of Armenia's weapons. On the other hand, Russia is all the conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan um, escalated in 2020 into a six week war in which estimated 5,700 people died. The war was not completely unexpected as deadly skirmishes have occurred regularly since the previous full scale war between the two states ended in 1994. The topical backgrounder discuss discusses the military buildup in the north countries that preceded the 2020 war. Also wary of Turkey's ambitions and the fact that Ankara is a NATO member. An expansion it's, of Turkey's it's, influence. It's just, it's so unfortunate for them because they're not, not only they're landlocked, but they're also surrounded by opposing um, a country, like ideological countries as well. This would mean expansion of NATO's influence that could extend as far as Turkmenistan. This is something Putin cannot afford and will do everything to keep other powers away from establishing influence in this region, be it a friend or a foe. Given the geopolitical dynamics of the region, India's involvement is in fact in Russia's favor because that could keep Armenia away from Western influence. While Armenia may currently oh. show some anti-Russian sentiments, it remains a valuable ally for Moscow in the region. The Russians are not keen on letting Armenia shift its alliance towards the West and end up being another NATO proxy in the region. Iran's motive... So that's that's why that uh, they're kind of okay with India giving them weapons, uh, just so he, they don't reach out to Europe or to, you know, like the U.S. or someone for help. Helping India largely stems from Israel's backing of Azerbaijan. Uh, flight tracker info, info shows many visits to Avda Airport in southern Israel uh, by Azerbaijan planes before offensive in strategic partnership against Iran. Okay, regions Armenia's. Dismay. Which supplied 70% of Azerbaijan's arsenal from 2016 to 2020, giving them an edge in the 2020 war against Armenia. And Israelis' interest in the region is largely driven by a desire to counter their biggest adversary, Iran. The existence of a pro-Israeli Azerbaijan on Iran's northern border poses a security threat to the Iranian regime. This is compounded by the large Azeri population residing in western Iran. Fears exist that Israel and the U.S. could exploit their influence over Azerbaijan to incite anti-Iranian activities among the Iranian Azeris. Hmm. Hence, both Russia and Iran would prefer a strong and stable Armenia to safeguard their interests in the region. And for India, its recent military exports to Armenia openly aligns them on Yerevan's side, signaling India... It's unfortunate, this big old thing right here. Why does Britain no, no longer want it? migrants? Is blocking the video. ...his willingness to abandon its non-aligned stance to safeguard its interests. It remains to be seen if this move by India will work in its favor or against it. Interesting. Okay, um, I was kind of hoping... What is this? The Balkan-Indian Reddit War? What is that? The Balkan Indian... Okay, I have to take a look at that. <laughs> With the, the, the Wojak memes. Um, sorry, that, that really distracted me. Um, I was kind of hoping that uh, he would go into more about the India's relation. Like, I mean, maybe the, 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 you know, the world doesn't know, but like what, what exactly everything that India is, is sending over their way and, and the bigger role that it took. I mean, he, he, he went over more of the conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan and the surrounding area, which is good. Um, it's, it's good to get that, uh, uh, the insight on that. U.S. plan if China takes Taiwan, the infographic show. That's something I might want to take a look at as well. Um, 
Okay. Okay. I think it was a good video. I think it was an interesting little video. Um, it, I mean, it, it, it showed case to me something that I didn't know. So that's always a good thing, right? Let's take a look at the description here. Uh, in this video, in this video, we dive, we will provide you with latest defense news and insights. Um, do watch full video and other videos as well. Okay. Let's take a look at the comments. Yeah. Let's see what the comments have to say. This is a pinned comment by uh, the Rohit J uh, QK8JY. The whole problem was basically worsened by Joseph Stalin, the Soviet leader until 1953 when he died. Stalin played various ethnic... Jeez. Uh, Stalin played various ethnicities in the Soviet Union against each other as part of a divide and rule policy similar to that of the British in India. True. For example, the cities of Bukhara and Samarkand uh, were historically Tajik, but Stalin ensured they were made part of the Uzbek SSR and not the Tajik SSR. Similarly, uh, Nagorno-Karabakh was made part of the Azerbaijani SSR, despite having a clear Armenian majority. Towards the latter part of the Soviet Union, when it was dis disintegrating, a nationalist sentiment emerged in various Soviet social republics, uh, as they wanted more autonomy and even outright independence. Armenia and Azerbaijan's tensions over Nagorno-Karabakh uh, should have prompted an intervention by Mikhail Gorbachev, uh, the last leader of the Soviet Union, but Gorbachev pro proved indecisive and chose not to intervene. In the 1990s, Russia supported Armenia, which decisively won engagements against Azerbaijan, supported by Turkey. Turkey was prevented from intervening against Armenia due to Russia's troop buildup. Now, however, the situation has changed. Azerbaijan's oil wealth and geostrategic importance means that Putin is willing to sacrifice Armenia. Azerbaijan also purchased advanced Turkish and Israeli combat drones, which were used very effectively in the recent clashes against Armenia, webbing up many tank columns of that country and aiding in Azerbaijan's victory it's wild to me to think I mean just there's conflicts going on between Armenia and Azerbaijan and they're they're using Israeli and Indian weapons against each other um man um Despite both uh, having Shia, Sharia, Shia majorities, Iran and Azerbaijan don't get along. Azerbaijan was part of the Persian Empire for a long time until Iran, the Persia, ceded it to the Tsarists, Russia, after losing the Russo-Persian Wars in the 1990s. Iran's Ayatollah tried to infiltrate Azerbaijan's Shia community and spread their influence there, but this was detected by Azerbaijan and thwarted. Ties have remained frosty since, and this is a large reason why Iran supports Armenia instead. Another insecurity of Iran uh, is that the East Azerbaijan province, whose natives are Azeri, might one day seek independence or merge with Azerbaijan. This leads to more tensions. I believe in India. I believe India is doing the right thing by arming Armenia. Both India and Armenia have been victims of Turkic aggression in the past. Both Turkey and Azerbaijan despicably deny the Armenian genocide and claim that it never happened. A few. Oh, the Armenian genocide. Yeah, that's right. Okay. What, reading this, that that triggered, and I I thusly remembered. Okay. Um, this typically deny the Armenian genocide and claim that it never happened. A few years back, uh, Turkey's president Erdogan have claimed the Holocaust against Jews never happened. It must also be noted that when Article 370 was repeated, repealed in Jammu Kashmir, Article 370 is, um, there's a, there's a few videos that I want to watch about the Article 370. Uh, I know a lot of people, uh, request, uh, uh, not requested, but, um, suggested that I watch the, the, the T Shraj put video of on, on our article 370. It would also be noted that when article 370 was repealed in Jammu Kashmir, uh, Turkey uh, rushed to support Pakistan diplomatically with Ed Drogan, uh, even having the audacity to denounce India in a speech at the Union, the, the UN General Assembly. Uh, since then, India has rightfully taken a hardline stance against the axis of Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Pakistan. 
Great video, by the way. I just wanted to mention some additional info, which I hope might be useful to know. This was incredibly useful. This was incredibly, like the background info. This is this is the information I wanted from the video, to be honest with you. <laughs> I wish this was stated in the video. Thanks for the comment. Um, you might uh, you rightly pointed out Stalin's role in this conflict. India should continue to bank Armenia while France is also supplying weapons. All right. Armenia being the first Christian country is not supported by any Christian countries is the worst because of the gas imports from Azerbaijan. India does have diplomatic interest with Armenia, but it also has responsibilities to protect its the civilization uh, interest of Armenia. Irony is that a Hindu majority country has to support the first Christian country while the entire Christian dysphoria is sleeping on Azerbaijan gas imports. West only speaks on its interests. Hmm. Interests are paramount. A similar situation is in the Arab world. Armenia is not anti-Russian, but against Muslim dictatorship. Eventually, Armenia will regroup with Russia unless Europe gets Armenia in its influence. Armenia should be under the India's influence by hook or crook, neither with Russia nor Europe. I don't think India is actively seeking to do that. Such a situation would place India in a direct confrontation with other players, something India won't, likely, won't like to do. There's a hidden confrontation with other players apart from the good re relations with France. Nothing matters for India and Europe. We are looking for a direct confrontation with the middle powers like World War I. Anyone can face the wrath of India, but be it Germany or Qatar. Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria should keep out of it if they, want to, <laughs> if they don't want troubles. Oil's not India's headache. Russia can protect Central Asia oil. UK, US can pump oil in... I don't know, Azerbaijan. Why is he saying Azerbaijan? Is that like a, like a, okay. <laughs> um, it's not India's interest. Okay. All right. Uh, we are with Armenia. They face so much violence and India should help them. Uh, Indians just get better at world chess. Brilliant move. India's relations with Armenia is, fra is from pre-Christian times. For India, Armenia is not just any other country. She is an old friend. Really. An old friend. This person says, how? Uh, many thousands of Armenians have had settled all across northern India and other parts starting as early as the Persian Empire and lasting up to the Mughals. Primarily for trade, but they came from various reasons and stayed. In fact, if you are from north India and do a genetic test, there is a mid to high probability of Armenia is present Huh. Uh, on that list, just like Iran, Turkey, Greece, or the general Middle East. Interesting. Thanks for using the correct Indian map. Indian leaders currently in power prefer uh, multi-alignment over non-alignment, suiting the needs of the time. And Iran gives green light to India uh, of supplying weapons. India heart uh, Armenia. Using correct Indian map shows his depth of knowledge in geopolitics. I want to know about Armenia and Azerbaijan war. This video is just perfect. Appreciate the work. Okay. Let's take a look at some of the newer comments as well. I like to look at the top comments. I also like to look at the new comments. You never know what, what, what shows up in the new comments. It could be very saucy. So, uh, Azerbaijan has the right to defend itself. Um, what did he say? Azerbaijan was an attack in the first place. It was them who launched the offensive in 2020 and 2023. Uh, whole world is in the fight with each other. Unfortunately, yes. Highly biased and Indian narrative. Shame on you. The video is of Indian weapons supply, not an analysis of conflict itself. Okay. Uh, should uh, India should help provide all... <laughs> God, I can, my, my reading comprehension today is terrible. India should provide all help to Armenia, Cyprus, Greece. These countries are linked to India uh, for, for more than 2,000 years. Plus, uh, thumbs up. Sending love and respect to India, Armenia to India. Uh, any new channel will start with Indian content and get more views and subscribers. As soon as they get good number of subscription, India who? Question mark. Kind of ins insecure and opportunistic, but whatever works, works. I'm Indian. Oh, the second school is India. He did not. I know, I don't want to sound... Um, I don't want to sound like... Uh, he didn't sound Indian. So, I don't, like, what is, what, is the, what is the word I'm looking for here? I don't, I don't want to sound... Um, 
uh, I don't know. <laughs> I can't even think of the word that I'm trying to say that I don't want to sound like. So, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't, to me, he didn't sound, uh, like, a, like the typical Indian accent. Disputes have territorial claims dating back 2,500 years. However, to understand the context. It's very, it's a very Western, Westernized accent. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Thumbs up for using correct Indian map. Um, wrong analysis, Azerbaijan had benefit of Pakistani weapons. JF-17 isn't delivered yet. In the 2020-23 conflict, Azeris uh, used weapons supplied by Turkey and Israel. Turkey even left behind F-16s for Azeris after concluding their military exercise days before the attack. Indian-made weapons are very powerful. Hearts, hearts... Anti-Russian Armenia, what? Russia has always backed Armenia. In fact, Armenia used Russian weapons in the recent Nagorno, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the war. <laughs> we support countries fighting Islamic extremes and imperialism. India is selling the weapon at the behest of Russia. By India selling weapons to Armenia, Russia is not burdened with diverting its military supply to sell to Armenia. Plus, Russia uses up the currency it has piled up uh, in India since India can't uh, pay them in dollars. Plus, India isn't close enough to Armenia to gain any meaningful sway on Armenia. This is a very smart move by Russia. Plus, if Russia had supplied the weapons directly, then the West would counterarm Azerbaijan. Russia supplied weapons to both Armenia and Azerbaijan. Moral of the story, a Drogan is the main culprit here. To an extent, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's act I actually kind of want to take a look at the channel. I didn't I didn't realize that uh Yeah, he was Indian. Oh yeah, look, he's out of India even. Uh, we simplify the incredible, com uh, complicated uh, world around us. Our team of experts bring you the latest insights and analysis on global economic trends, business case studies, and geopolitical developments. If you're someone who likes staying informed about the world around us, join us. Subscribe now to stay up to date on the world's uh, most pressing geopolitical and economic issues. The Second School. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, Air India... Um, why Djibouti has so many military bases, um, uh, Guyana's brilliant defense strategy against Venezuela, Brazil economy standing tall or standing still. Did India just play its biggest ever masterstroke? A Pakistan biggest ally, China is causing its downfall. <laughs> okay. Was India wrong about Kacha? Tivu Island. This is the island, the Kachativu Island. Um, they gave this island to Sri Lanka without informing, like the the Indian government did it without informing locals or Tamil Nadu, right? Thus changing the territorial waters and fishing right locations over to Sri Lanka. So that that really messed with Tamil Nadu, correct? Is that is that what the the gist of what I'm getting with it? I'm pretty sure that's the island in question. India secret, India secretly expanding by whatever square kilometers. How are they building artificial islands? Or is India building artificial islands? You guys, let gotta let me know. Interesting. The, the second school. I like Joe Biden here. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> this is Joe Biden. So this is um Joe Biden. This is the the French guy. I don't remember his name. I don't know who this is. And then we have Modi, Putin, and Winnie the Pooh over here. Or, uh, sorry, uh, Xi Jinping. Huh, why Why are they on opposing sides? What's going on with that? <laughs> oh no, there's nothing to draw on a, a line between. The rise of Taiwan, why China needs Taiwan. Interesting. Okay, well. Um, yeah, I think this is a really interesting video. I'm glad it was recommended to me. I feel like uh, I feel like I need to know more though, man. Some of these videos, eight minutes long. I, I need I need more. <laughs> I definitely need something a little bit longer, a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, just just a lot more background. <sighs> one day, one day, one day. Okay, so guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to go and check out the second school. Give them a subscription. Give them a thumbs up. Again, my YouTube. It's messing up, man. The The thumbs up is not working. I have to click multiple times, but I know that you guys can go over there and give it a thumbs up for me in the meantime, right? 
Um, <laughs> uh, with that being said, thank you for watching. I hope you all have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next one. Yeah, take care. Goodbye.